Hello, my name is Julie Rybczynski, and I'm, I am a professor of music at Central Connecticut State University. The purpose of this tutorial is to provide you with strategies to help you prepare for the Connecticut Music Educators High School Regional Orchestra auditions, which are coming up in no November. Further information may be found uh, about the festival or the auditions on the web at cmea.org. At the close of the recent Olympics, I was very inspired and reminded of the similarities between the preparation of those amazing athletes and what it takes to prepare for an audition. You must work consistently and continuously over a long period of time in order to prepare, perform well at that very moment when you have the game or the event, or in this case, the audition. The cello auditions are divided into three sections scales, prepared pieces, and sight reading. The judges have a rubric with specific categories to score and rate your performance. Those categories include accuracy of pitch and rhythm, intonation, tone, and overall musicianship. Now let's take a look at each section of the auditions. First, scales. This year, the scales and arpeggios are F major and D minor. They should be performed at a quarter equals 60 on the metronome in practice and not really performed faster than that during the audition. There's really no reason to. It will not enhance your score in any way. Uh, in this case, you need to take special care to play exactly accurately as far as intonation goes. Here's what that scale would sound like. Of course, it would be well to practice the scales in lots of different ways, not just at that main pattern. For example, you could play them slowly and slur in groups of twos, threes, or fours. And that's what this might sound like in practice for the D minor scale. Make sure that you have accurate fingerings. Once you hit the tonic of the scale, which is D in this case, then your fingering pattern is one, two, one, two, one, two, three. In order to really enhance your intonation, work with a chromatic tuner, which you can find as an app on your cell phone if you look carefully. Make sure it plays right through either the D or F as you practice. Take your scales very seriously. Start every practice session with a slow scale and warm up and work up the tempo so that your intonation and your sound is very beautiful and very accurate. <laughs>
Okay, so that should give you an overview of the piece. Now let's talk about some specifics to help you really prepare it. The first thing, and the most important, is that you play every section rock solidly in tempo. And there's quite a range of tempos that would be acceptable. I would say if you put the quarter note on from 100 to 120, anywhere in that realm would be terrific. So how do we choose? How do we know to keep consistent? Well, find the place that's the hardest. So let's stop, start on the top of page three, or the pickup to measure 146, thinking about how fast we can actually play that, that lick that comes down. Or maybe you can only play. So you find the tempo that you can play that one lick, and you play the whole piece at that tempo, with the exception of the two main o sections where you should pull back in tempo. We'll talk, talk about that in a second. So I pretty much chose the tempo of 116 for that performance, and I tried to stick with it. And in fact, when I practiced it, I always had the metronome on. So that if the metronome's on at 116, and here's what that sounds like, right? I'm going to start the piece. <laughs> at that tempo, and I'm going to keep really solid. Now, when I get to the Pulento spot, which is at measure 73, I'm going to play that a little slower, but I'm going to eventually get up to my tempo and no faster. That's the key. So this would sound something like this. With the metronome going on, I'm going to go behind it at first. <laughs> faster than my marked tempo. And I think that's really important in those sections, because if you do go faster, you're going to end up going ahead too much, and it might be too hard to get back. So that section, really watch out. And the other one is the main toward the end, so that you don't end up having to play the ending much too fast. So tempo is really key. Uh, the next thing to think about is let's, let's go back to that section on the top of page three because that's the, probably the hardest and that's going to take much of your time. So you should start, pick up to 146 practicing, and you should actually practice these so you hear the bass notes. And the next one. And the next one. So you really understand what those sound like. So you can go there in a heartbeat. Right? And then you, the next thing you should do is practice across the strings or mush the sounds together so you hear them as chords. So you get that fifth and that. And always check that G so that you have the top in tune. Make sure you hold the half note G in measure 151 long enough. And then in the next two measures where that famous lick is, realize that the orchestra or the piano part is really doing nothing while you play that. So you can really s suck in your tempo and go with a very solid. <laughs> really feel the beats in that so that you don't get ahead of yourself. And that is, those are the tips for that hardest section. Let's talk just for one second about the opening of the piece. This is one of the most magnificently dramatic openings, isn't it? And I love, it's typical of, of Saint-Saëns. If you know the Saint-Saëns cello concerto, right? <laughs> he loves that drama, so go for it. And I started up bow, and you must be careful to make all the 16th accurate. So one way to practice that, practice that might be with your target tempo metronome, and play all 16th notes. So. So you hear that. So you hear exactly how those 16th notes should sound. And that will give you uh, a good indication. I think that that might have given you most of the things you need to know. When you get to the bottom of the first page, this is just like butter, right? It should just be so soft and... Right? Not rushing, but I don't want to hear beats there because that's not the intent of the piece. It should be very floaty at that point. Other places that need to have sort of a lyrical sense, because remember, this piece is full of drama, uh, things like this. Um, at measure 10, 11, 12, measure 13. Really beautiful. 
that's where you want to show off your beautiful, beautiful sound in vibrato. So find those different colors and different characters in the piece. Because remember, music is not just accuracy of pitch, accuracy of rhythm, perfect intonation. It is music, and you must play it like that. So you really need to find those characters and drama in each section. Uh, so that concludes my section on the prepared piece. If you want any other specific tips about fingerings um, that you ha haven't been able to get from watching me do it, uh, please email me at ribchinskyj at ccsu.edu, and I'd be glad to scan the part and send it to you. Remember, though, that when you go into the audition, you must walk into the audition with the hard copy edition that you have purchased. They will not accept you playing off of the Xerox copy, so remember that. Okay, and finally, just a word about the third section because many students neglect to practice sight reading. How do we practice that? Well, it's not that much fun. It's not that much fun to just open an orchestral part and then really make sure that you're accurate with pitch and rhythm, but you must do some of that. But one fun way might be if you have another friend or partner that's also uh, auditioning for the regionals, you might get together and play duets. There's so many cello duets that you can really download and, and read from uh, off the website I, that deals with the uh, International Music Library Project, or IMSLP. And so if you Google these composers and Google cello duo IMSLP, you should be able to pop up, up parts. Some of my favorite are by Kummer, K-U-M-M-E-R, Glier, G-L-I-E-R-E, -E, Lee, L-E-E, -E, Baccarini, the Sonata in C major is also a great one. So you might just sit down with a friend and sight read. But remember, if you do that, you must not stop. You really have to be accurate with pitch and rhythm and try to stay with the beat as best you can. So the key to good sight reading is, there are three keys. The first is the key, know the key of the piece, know the tempo, find the tempo from the hardest notes that you have in, in the piece, and then do not stop. Go right to the end, even if you make mistakes. So I hope these tips have been helpful. Again, I am available to anyone that has any questions or specifically would like to chat with me a little bit further about um, preparing these pieces. And I wish you all the best of luck because playing in these regional, regional orchestras is really so much fun. And preparing for the audition allows you to really grow your playing in wonderful ways. Thank you so much for listening.